He kept hearing buzzing from the walls of his home, and then he found strange notes. Eerie feeling. Tar Puppy, a Redditor whose true identity was kept hidden, was all alone in the house for a month while his family took off on an ocean cruise. Then things got really weird. He felt as if he was being watched and objects around the house were being moved. He was at the brink of insanity as he came to the conclusion that there was someone else in the house besides himself and his dog Murphy. Two weeks later, Tar Puppy was practically terrified but was determined to figure out what was going on. Then his parents came home and found their property was a mess. But what on earth had left Tar Puppy so disturbed that he'd allowed cops to rummage through and quarantine his family's home? Harrowing first night. The first night was pretty uneventful, and yet Tar Puppy felt very uncomfortable as the night progressed. But this wasn't uncommon. He suffered from anxiety, but something about this night was different. He couldn't sleep, he'd binged on Netflix for hours, but his mind wouldn't allow him to relax. Eventually, he got out of bed and walked down the stairs to the kitchen to make himself a nice cup of warm cocoa. He used the heat of the drink to keep his hands warm as he went out on the porch. He hoped the cool night air would soothe his nerves. He had no idea that he was being monitored right outside the dimly lit perimeter of the porch light, and his real-life nightmare was about to start. Link to the Outside World As Tar Puppy sat on the porch, he remembered he left his phone in the house. He felt isolated without it, but he knew that a connection to the outside world would bring him peace of mind. So he put his mug down on the small ledge outside by the front door and went in to grab his cell phone. Then he put the bolt on the door and locked it. It was a force of habit, but it made him feel safe as he ran inside to find what he was looking for. Moments later, he realized this was actually a great idea, because a situation was about to unfold on the same porch he'd been relaxing on just moments before. Danger, danger. In his original post, Tar Puppy said that he unlocked the front door and went out to the porch to get his cup of cocoa. Then he realized things could have gone very bad for him if he hadn't locked the door when he did. He was looking for the mug, but it wasn't where he had originally left it on the ledge. That meant that someone had moved it. Someone had deliberately placed the cup about six feet away from the home's main entrance, barely inside the porch light's ring of illumination. The hairs on his neck stood out and his heart skipped a beat. His brain was telling him there was danger. Was there someone watching him from the darkness? And were they trying to lure him out of the house? Let us in. It took him a second to run back into the house, slam the door shut, and lock it. Tar Puppy could feel the adrenaline surging through every vein in his horrified body. Then he heard what sounded like heavy running footsteps. So he took a peek through the people to see who was out there. But what he saw on the porch chilled him to the bone. A dark figure paced back and forth as it muttered words he couldn't quite make out. It suddenly dawned on Tar Puppy that he was being watched the whole time. So he searched the house frantically and found his dad's Remington. But when he took another look, the figure had vanished. Cat and Mouse As Redditors read Tar Puppy's latest post, they feared for his safety. But things only got weirder from that point. A couple of days later, the mystery of Tar Puppy's home grew. He updated his original post, which was even more terrifying. It was obvious that he was under a great deal of stress when he shared the following words that left everyone shaken. It's become clear to me that I am a pawn, forced to play in a very sick game. But why had someone drawn him into this game of cat and mouse? Unfortunately for him, the question was about to get an answer. Not alone. The second incident happened after he came home from work a little earlier one day. He decided to take in a movie and order a pizza. As he got comfy, he decided to open the fridge, and that's when he noticed it was slightly opened. He checked the temperature inside, but it hadn't even gone up two degrees. He knew he hadn't left it open before he left for work, so who opened it? And why did they do it right before he arrived? None of it made any sense. Then he realized his dog Murphy was barking outside, so he took a look, and that's when he saw he wasn't alone. Intruder alert. Tar Puppy's peripheral vision alerted him to the fact that his cutting board, which was on his left, wasn't where it should have been. He posted, When my eyes fixed and focused on what it was, it hit me so hard, it put the deepest crack in the hole of my sanity, and instantly began filling it up with fear and anxiety. There was another note. He was mortified as he stretched out his arm and grabbed the note with his left hand. Then he read what it said. I told you. The words resonated in his terrified mind as he searched around the house to see if there were any other signs of forced entry or an intruder. But he found nothing. How did someone get into his home? Panic room. Tar Puppy ran to his room and locked the door. He realized he had to call the cops, but his mind was racing a mile a minute as he gave them his address. But not much else. Then he waited for help to arrive. Then he heard cops pull up to his house, kick the front door open, and then knock on his bedroom door. He immediately heard them shout police, 
but he refused to leave the confines of his room until the cops searched every nook and cranny of his home. Nothing else would calm his nerves. Lurking within. Tar Puppy explained the situation to the cops, but he could tell from their faces that they didn't believe him. They probably thought he was insane. And since they hadn't found anyone or anything, they asked him to call if something else happened. But they practically suggested that he'd wasted their time. He felt so bad that he escorted them out and watched them drive off. At around 9.30 p.m., he brought Murphy into the house and locked the doggy door. He decided to stay up the whole night and keep watch. But then something happened that Tar Puppy never expected. Something insidious lurked in the walls a couple of feet where he laid his head to rest every single night. Mysterious noise. The nerve-wracked Redditor was relieved that nothing had happened for several nights. This put his mind at ease. He realized that what happened on that fateful night was horrifying. But he'd found an area he assumed was the original point of entry and secured it. He figured the intruder had crawled in through the doggy door. But once he bolted the door shut, all signs of the intruder disappeared. Tar Puppy figured that the intruder was done bothering him and left. He was in bed one night. It was a good thing that he didn't have Netflix on because he'd heard something. The noise was loud and consistent. He wondered if the neighbors were partying. Then the sound grew louder. It was driving him insane. Then he realized that the noise was coming from inside the walls right behind him. He could no longer stand that horrible pulsing sound. So he jumped out of bed, grabbed a hammer, and started pounding on the wall. He banged on it with anger. He knew he had to do whatever it took to put an end to the noise. Then he placed his back against the wall and sank to the floor in defeat. But this only made his anxiety grow with more intensity as the noise continued. He decided that he would need to acquire the right equipment in the morning to investigate the source of the noise. But what was causing it? And what was really behind the wall? Dark shadows. Something wasn't right. What was really happening in Tar Puppy's home? He had a splitting headache and felt like he was stuck in a living nightmare for the past week. He'd grown extremely paranoid in such a short time. He was even afraid to leave his home, and that feeling continued to grow. Then one day, he didn't go to work. Whatever was happening in his home had taken over his entire life. There were times when he saw dark shadows in his peripheral vision and assumed it was an intruder. But when he turned to look, the shadows were gone. He wrote on Reddit that he felt as if his mind and body were slowly being poisoned, but he didn't know just how correct he was. It was only a matter of time before cops raced into his home and confirmed a horrible truth, unlike anything he could have fathomed. Dark Puddle When he woke up the following morning, he felt drained. The noise, which grew louder and louder, had kept him up all night. He stumbled through the hallway like a zombie and then brewed himself some coffee. He hoped this would give him the energy he desperately needed to make it through the day. He took the coffee and sat down in the living room. The noise was loud in there, too. The room also smelled sweet and somewhat familiar. He wasn't sure where the scent was coming from. Then he noticed something as he drank his coffee. There was a thick stain against the far wall, and it had pooled on the carpet, too. This was the source of the unusual scent. He stood up and approached the dark puddle on the carpet. Something thick was oozing down the wall. It was like tree sap, only darker. The entire wall was full of it. But how was this even possible? He tried to process this discovery, but the past few days had been so stressful that his brain had turned to clay. The only thing he knew for sure was that he had to leave the house. If he left the insanity of this house and never came back, then maybe he had a chance. It had simply become too much to handle, and he realized he was on the verge of losing it. Crack in the wall. Tar Puppy grabbed his dog Murphy and walked outside. It was all he could do to escape the home's insanity. Then he tapped on the house's wall and listened. He circled the house a couple times in order to triangulate the area in the wall where the sound was louder. This was the only option he had to get to the bottom of this. Then he noticed a crack in the bricks that was large enough for his index finger to slide into. He felt dampness and warmth coming from inside the wall, so he wiggled his finger in order to figure out how deep the crack went. Then his skin touched something, and his right arm was whacked with a wave of excruciating pain. He immediately yanked his finger out of the crack and cussed in agony. That was the last straw. He ran into his shed, grabbed the sledgehammer, and started pounding on the wall. His anger fueled his strength as he tore the wall down. The truth revealed. Tar Puppy managed to loosen a brick in the wall and slide it out. He scraped his knuckles in the process, but that was the least of his worries. He laughed like a crazy person as he tossed the brick away and took another look inside the hole. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. It was so shocking that he initially thought he was imagining the whole thing. He shook his head and blinked a few times, but it wasn't a hallucination. He'd finally discovered the source of the noise that had bothered him all this time. He took another look and then reached into his pocket and grabbed the phone. Then his injured fingers started dialing. What's that buzzing sound? An hour later, they came in a white van. They put on their safety suits and got to work right away. When Tar Puppy removed the brick, he saw a honeycomb and an impressive number of bees. It turns out that the humming and buzzing on the other side of the wall was the sound of thousands of bees. In fact, there were so many of them that honey had begun to seep from the material on the other side of the wall. Tar Puppy was a little calmer now that he knew the sound was caused by something real and 
not a figment of his imagination. But there was one thing that still didn't make any sense. The bees couldn't have written the notes, and they certainly didn't explain why he was so nervous. He had this eerie feeling that this story was about to reach a climax. He had no idea that he was about to uncover something in the walls that was far more dangerous than a bunch of bees. Removing the hive. No one was more shocked than Jordy of Jordy's Bee Removal Service when the bricks were removed, and it became clear what was behind the wall. There were about 35,000 bees, and he'd never seen such a high concentration of these insects before. The beehive was pretty big, too, so it took five hours to smoke to relocate them. Then they had to remove the massive hive a piece at a time. In fact, one honeycomb slab was five feet tall and three feet wide. No wonder Tar Puppy sounded like he had PTSD when he called and asked them to come save him. When they first drove up to the house, he'd been waiting outside with his head in his hands. But there was something about the way his eyes looked when he showed them the hole in the wall that left Jordy very unsettled. He was spiraling. Tar Puppy waited impatiently for Jordy to remove the beehive. His words had been practically unintelligible when he spoke with Jordy and his crew. He even shook as he struggled to order his thoughts and explain the problem to the men who simply wanted to take a look at the hive he'd found earlier. Tar Puppy wanted a glass of water, but every time he thought he poured himself a glass, he found that he was simply standing over the sink and his hand was always empty. There was something clearly wrong with him, but he had no idea how to process what was happening in a way that he could eventually understand. Then he noticed something on the tiles that made him spiral toward the abyss of his fragile mind. He was upon him. He saw the mug he saw on that first night, the one that had been moved from the porch, smashed to bits on the tiles. But he was the only one in the house. His fear took hold of him and his hands began to tremble violently. His entire world and his sanity had started to crumble, and he found it difficult to stay conscious. The intruder was in his home again, but were they still there? He ran to his parents' bedroom and tried to open the safe, but he found that the key had been moved from under the carpet so he couldn't open it. So he frantically looked for anything he could use to fight off the intruder who had been stalking him over the past two weeks and he knew deep within his core that something bad was going to happen. The situation had gone from bad to worse. The tension was high and it was only a matter of time before his world collapsed. Then he heard heavy footsteps coming up the stairs, but they stopped by the time they reached the bedroom door. Was the intruder finally going to attack? Backed into a wall. His eyes were locked on the bedroom door. His back was on the wall as terror grew from within. This was it. Everything he had experienced over the past two weeks was about to lead to this final showdown. A part of him even felt relieved because one way or the other, it would be over. Then he saw the doorknob turn. The door flung open and the mysterious stranger walked inside. Whoever it was, it was making heavy breathing sounds. He barely had time to notice the white biohazard suit before darkness enveloped him and he slipped into unconsciousness. Black Mass Jordy's bee removal service had dug even deeper into the crevice behind the massive beehive, but the crew was puzzled and concerned when they saw what looked like a black mass running along the home's interior. They immediately called the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who immediately sent a unit to investigate the home. It turned out that Stacky Botrys, or Black Mold, had been lurking behind the walls this whole time and it was slowly poisoning Tar Puppy with each day that passed. As Greg B. Cole swept the house for the black mold, he stumbled on Tar Puppy, who was unconscious in the master bedroom. He immediately carried him to safety and later explained that black mold was toxic and could cause paranoid delusions, amnesia, and hallucinations. Their home was ruined. Tar Puppy's parents decided to cut their crew short and disembarked as soon as the CDC called them. Their home was quarantined and deemed a threat to human life because of the high levels of black mold. But their only concern was for their unconscious son as they urgently tried to get home. When they got there, they were stunned. Their exterior walls had been removed. In their place were a series of gaps and a couple of straggling bees buzzing around. The house was cordoned off by police tape and there was a van outside with a biohazard symbol on the side. This concerned the already worried parents even more. The Redditor was no longer sure what part of his nightmare was true and how much of it was the result of the toxic black mold. Was there really an intruder lurking in the house? He simply wasn't certain. His mind has somehow taken him on the wildest ride ever, but was it possible he had actually imagined that horrific living nightmare? He couldn't believe it. As soon as he was okay, he intended to go back to the house. He still had the cryptic notes, which meant he had proof that someone had been inside the home. He knew that if he could feel the notes in his hands one more time, it would confirm he wasn't hallucinating. This was very important to him because he knew it couldn't have been an episode of paranoid delusion that created the horrific and intricate nightmare. A place to call home. All their belongings were contaminated with black mold, and yet there was nothing they could do. Their whole lives were connected to that house, but they had no idea when they could return. Tar Puppy was born and raised here, so it was literally his only home. But was his hotel room his new home? He refused to accept that. He wanted to go back, 
but first he told his parents about the notes he received. Unfortunately, they shut him down and refused to hear him out. On the sixth day of his exile, Tar Puppy decided to go back to the house and look for the notes. He knew if he found them, he could prove they were real, not just to his parents, but also to himself. Then he would have no reason to question his sanity. That had become his life's mission. He remembered everything vividly. At the very least, the fear was real. In fact, whenever he thought about the events that frightened him so much, he felt his heart pounding within his chest. So he had to quell his doubts, waiting for some answers. Tar Puppy was the first to wake up. He tiptoed his way out of the hotel while his folks slept peacefully. His fingers shook as he dialed the number to call for a cab. He was a ball of nerves as he waited outside for the taxi to arrive. He kept his hands in his pockets and paced back and forth on the sidewalk. A part of him was afraid to go home. Would he run into the intruder? Final destination. As soon as the cab arrived, he stepped inside and gave the driver the address. Before he knew it, he was on his way home, possibly for the very last time. It was a 30-minute drive and Tar Puppy was nervous with each passing minute. Soon he was on his street, and then he saw his old home bathed in the morning light. He immediately noticed the neon police tape around the property's perimeter, which warned anyone from walking inside. The driver was puzzled. At first he thought he'd driven to the wrong address, but Tar Puppy assured him that he was right where he wanted to be. He stepped out of the cab and began to walk up the driveway. Home sweet home. Tar Puppy searched for the spare key hidden under the slats of the front porch. Then he snapped the police tape that was in front of him and unlocked the door. He took a breath to brace himself. Then he swung the door open, but what he saw within took his breath away. His home was unrecognizable. It had been ripped apart, and yet the scent of honey and fumigation fumes were still present in the air. The walls and floors were covered in white tarp. There was a fungicide mist hovering over the interior like a cloud. Toxic fumes. To avoid breathing in the toxic fumes, Tar Puppy covered his face with his sleeve and then ran up to his bedroom. When he got there, he saw that everything was exactly where it was before he left the house. There were shirts on the floor and even his TV was left on. He also noticed that the Netflix message, Are You Still Watching House of Cards? was still flickering on the screen. But he wasn't interested in watching TV. He wanted those notes. So he rifled through his drawers and desk. He knew that he'd kept them here in case he needed to show them as evidence to the cops. But where were they? Had the intruders taken them? He panicked. Then he grabbed an old notebook that was placed on top of a paper pile and opened it. What he saw in it made him question everything and caused his body to shake with fear.